And it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Still rolling here. Oh, I hate rolling. I hate when they use it on the commentary and everything. But it is time for that big question of the week. Now DJ Lunchbox is on a sabbatical. Right? What? Yes. Okay. Jerk off it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> and Matt and Mike is going to fill in this week with the big question. That I am. And if it's a good question, maybe I'll do it next week. If not, maybe it'll go to someone else. But uh, this week's big question. Last week, we had a huge uh, trending topic. Hashtag give divas a chance. Right. Now, um, while it's a very admirable hashtag, and I think it benefited this week's Raw a little bit, I'm wondering if it's a little bit better to hashtag give divas a storyline. And I wanted to know everyone's thoughts on if it would be better for the Divas to have just longer matches or actual progressive storylines. Hmm. Hmm. And I think I will go with Eamon first. Yeah, because you know I can talk about this. This is what I'm saying, yes. Um, I would go with the latter. I think progressive storylines are more important than anything. Um, like I, like I kind of mentioned in the hangout, uh, during Raw, uh, somebody brought, I think it was Mike actually that brought up the, like, I wish, you know, Paige and Nikki Bella like main evented and they got like a 20 minute match or whatever. And my original thought was, I don't want that to happen because, you know, the Paige getting another title shot actually really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, it's not about just having matches. It's about getting people invested into the characters. Right. You know, that's something that I think has been the case for years and years and years in WWE, even when, you know, in, in certain areas where the women's wrestling wasn't ideal, um, they had stories at least, and they had motivations, and they had, you know, places to be on the show, and they weren't just filler. They, you know, I even the best stuff would like say, even if you want to say like Trish and Lita, that era of, you know, women in WWE, was it the wrestling? Sort of. But but Trish and Lita weren't spectacular, like amazing, like cutting edge professional wrestlers necessarily. But they were put in really big storylines. They were considered a big deal. They were you know, they shared the spotlight with some of the top uh talents, you know, and, and you know, weren't afraid to get, get involved. And I think that's what carried them. And I don't think I think you can see the same thing for, you know, WWE nowadays. I think people and maybe it's because of the whole PG thing, but I feel like the women are so set. They're so much in their own world and they're not allowed to interact with the men. They're not allowed to have, you know, any sort of, they're just supposed to be the divas division and you're supposed to have a divas match on the show. And it's going to be, you know, whoever is important versus pick a diva. And then they win in two minutes and that's it. And, and that's what we've been seeing on the main roster. Um, and, and that's been really disappointing. That's been the disappo disappointing point uh, about it all. Uh, so storylines, I think, are definitely should be the main focus more than longer matches. I think that none of us can give a more complete answer than he just gave. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Unless people disagree. No, that was amazing, actually. That was, that was tremendous. Um, I, I mean, I think... Um... My my personal answer, like I looked to someone like Sexy Star, <laughs> Lucha Underground, and I think the WWE, if they take the right steps, can do that. If they a allow it to happen, because the only re the only women's wrestler that we've seen that's gotten to really interact with the men in the ring is China. <laughs> that's not a good standard because China. Uh, yeah, because it's China it, or Nicole Bass or you know, but but even then, the, even the Nicole Bass was considered very jokey. And yeah, it was very much like look at this freak. I mean, I think you could start that on NXT. I honestly think you could. I think you could bring in someone. Hell, you could bring in Sarah Del Rey, mm -hmm. and just have her like randomly attack Sami Zayn. Like I, I don't see. There would like I think you'd have to start it slow. I don't think you could do it on Raw where what right away. Yeah. I think you could start an infusion of that kind of talent because honestly, Sexy Star is one of my favorite characters on Lucha Underground. Because 
she is an she is a an underdog in every match, which is something WWE loves, absolutely loves doing. They try and make John Cena an underdog in every match. It never works because he's John fucking Cena. If you had a talented female wrestler come into NXT and immediately start working with the men instead of the women. Like if she says that, listen, when I was a little girl, I didn't dream of being the women's champion. I dreamt of being WWE champion. And you can start a storyline like that, and I think it would work. I, I, I do agree. Uh, I would love to see that happen. I do think it needs to be a bit of a – it needs to be a certain thing that makes, I think, a bit of – not, not, not stay in a bit of sense, but like you mentioned, like Charlotte attacking Sami Zayn or whatever. Like I don't know if that would be the case. Like I would say like Charlotte going after maybe another second or third generation wrestler who is all about – like feuding with like Curtis Axel. And, be, and being like, I've lived up to my dad's standard way more than you lived up to yours. And just because I'm a woman, I'm not looked at the same way. That's that's compelling, and that has motivation, I think. And, that, would and, actually, that would actually be a hell of a lot of fun, too. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we'll go with Riz. Um, am I still muted? No, I'm good. No? All right, um, honestly... I don't think it would I, – I don't know, really. Like, it, it's one of those things where it, it's fine to fantasy book things like this. Because it, it shows that we do care about stuff like that. But we are just here. Who knows what's going to work? It is, And it's just point the point where just watch it. Don't try to book it. Just watch. I don't – like it, it, I'm probably sugarcoating. I'm tr- probably tiptoeing through the answer here, but uh, the give divas a chance thing was cool, was good, because it got that voice out there. Uh, but WWE is a different breed, and if they if they change, they're probably going to. It's just to the point where it's like okay. So now everybody's going to have to have a wrestling thing, even though it is from our truth. Uh, but it got to the point where it's just, eh. Like, if, it, if it happens, it happens. If not, if it doesn't. I don't, I don't know what else I to say, really. Uh, I'm also dealing with my little whiny little dog here. Uh, but, <laughs> I was going to say. Hence our awesome but, shot of your chin. It is an awesome. Hello. I an awesome Hi, Riz Jim. Uh, but what does the rest of you think of this question? <laughs> the rest of me thinks my chin is awesome, sort. All right. <laughs> uh, how, how about you, Bobby? Um, I think that uh, the divas, uh, like Gaiman was saying, you need you need the storyline. You need. I think you need wrestling too, though, because if you have a storyline and the, the matches aren't very good, it's not going to work. Like Cameron, if you had, you know I mean? and, and vice versa. If you have a good wrestling match and there's no story behind it, that's not going to really. I mean, it's going to be great, but it's not going to work either. You need right. both a storyline and a wrestling. And I think until they have that, where you have like the, the AJ and Page stuff, that was good storytelling, and it was it, they had some good matches. People were interested in the Divas then, and I think it, I think it could be like that. I think with AJ coming back. And possibly having a match with Paige and Nikki Bella and Brie Bella, maybe a Fatal Four Way or or tag match, whatever it is, it's going to be kind of cool. Plus the uh, Naomi and Natalya part of the tag match with Cesaro and uh, Tyson Kidd and the Usos, that is interesting too because they brought a storyline into it, and they're having really good wrestling matches too. So I agree. Yeah. I, I think also like the the concept of giving the wrestlers characters because I feel, I feel, in my opinion, I mean, at least with the current division we have now, it's either three cases, either you're catty and a heel or you're crazy or you don't have a character. Yeah, and then that's kind of sad. Or you're Rosamund. <laughs> or you're, well, and, and Rose is one of those that doesn't have, like what is Rosamund as his character? What is, you know, Alicia Fox's character? Fandango's prop. Yeah. <laughs> Propping up Fandango. Uh, 
What about you, Wheels? Uh, I agree with Bobby and Sir Eamon. Um, I think, honestly, you give people a good story and good matches. Like, okay, you have Paige and you have AJ back, basically. Both anti-divas. You have the Bellas, divas. Natty is definitely a woman's wrestler, not a diva. She may be on total divas, but she's a wrestler. You know what you do? You build a story of, you know what? We're tired of fighting for this Barbie doll belt. We want to be women's champions. They bring that back. And you have a battle with those two. And, I mean, I'm sorry. I hate that damn butterfly belt. And it's 